Testing. One, two, three, four, eight, nine. Seven, eight. Okay, she's ready. All right, so what is happening right now is Kirsten wants to welcome our online audience. So you can welcome them. Who wants to come on up? And welcome them. Look at them in the camera. Oh, hi. Welcome. Tell them what this is about. Okay, so. Tell them why you're here. Okay, so I'm here for youth group and we. So today. I don't know. I don't like my voice. I thought you were. Okay, Okay, so today. No. So today, um, Justin brought Rice Krispie treats and. Ow! I just got shocked. That hurt. And so we're here for youth group and it's from. Ew. 6.30 to 8.30. So, what's your favorite part about Rhyme? Food. Everything. And the games and fun and fellowship. So, welcome. Tell them they should come on over if they're watching online. You should come on. You should come. You should come. You should come to youth group. It's at the 6.30 to 8.30 and it's at the youth center. Sweet. Well, thank you. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Can you all hear me? I need to find a way to put this back onto my head. Whoa, it just got so quiet. Hello, people. Whoa. Does anyone remember what we have all these ping pong balls here for? Prayer requests, almost. For, for people, right, for our lost friends, we were able, last week, each of these balls represent a person that we prayed for last week. Isn't that super cool? So, we're going to keep this going. We're going to try to get this entire bucket filled with uh, ping pong balls, right? So, if you think of more friends tonight that you want to pray for in our small group time, we'll have an opportunity to get more um, prayer requests and then more people, and we want to pray for them. But we don't want them to just remain white ping pong balls. Probably next week or the week after, we're going to have colored ones. And whenever we get to share the gospel with someone or have a gospel conversation, we get to write their name on a colored ball. And then we get to put it in here too. So we get to see how much we're praying for people, how much we're sharing with people. And today, we're actually going to be talking about caring for people. And I want you all to welcome our newest member of... Rhyme, would you like to introduce your baby? It's not your baby. Would you like to introduce the baby? Nope. Okay. This is just going to be this. Oh, oh, I don't know. This is weird. Okay. I'm just going to, there's a, there's a fight for a baby happening. All right. Come on up. Come on up. Show the camera. His name is Joanne Than. His name is Joanne Than. Joanne Than. Joanne Than. Okay, and how how old is Joanne Can Than K something? It's like no, it's like Jonathan, but if you switch the N and the A, Joanne Than. Okay, okay, guys, we have a lesson in naming babies next week. I'm just kidding, but welcome to our newest member. At least it's not a creepy doll. You guys, I don't know where those creepy dolls went, but I'm glad that they're not around anymore. Oh, Renata knows where they are. I hope they burn. We should light them on fire and roast marshmallows. Any, all, all for lighting the creepy dolls on fire. Okay, we might have to do this. I know someone else who really hates them. You guys know a guy named Ben Phillips? He hates them with a passion. So, if you guys see him... You should bring more dolls to him. And then we will all have a great big campfire throwing. I hope no one's listening to this stream online now. It's throwing babies into the fire. Anyway, um, that is our intro to we're talking about caring for people today. (laughs) Babies are people. That's a whole other subject. Okay. Um, We're talking about caring for people. All right. We got a couple announcements. Today... You guys listening? You guys not listening? All right. So today is the last day to register for Dare to Share Live if you want 
a t-shirt, okay? So we're going to have opportunities to win t-shirts tonight. I got the prices yesterday. It's $10. The church is going to be putting some money um, for the t-shirts. Um, so it's brought down the price to $10 uh, per t-shirt. And I saw someone with a Dare to Share Live t-shirt today. Do you have one on? Do you want to stand up and let's see it? So it's kind of, it's kind of like this. You can stand if you want. Yeah. It's kind of like this with the same logo. Um, and you want to turn around? And said, in the back, we have this logo on it and some other cool stuff. So thank you for standing. And um, if you would like one for this year, Dare to Share 2022, tonight is the night. So he still holds your sweatshirt when you, whenever you see him. Let him know. Oh, I think that's, you got to talk to him about that. But we're talking about this T-shirt this year. Renata has a computer in the back there, okay? And that is how you register. You put in your information, you put in your t-shirt size. Um, so I'm gonna take up uh, a whole list. You guys can write down your name, um, your number, um, and if you want a t-shirt, you do have to pay $10 to get it. So either pay it this week, next week, or Saturday the 12th. That's the day, right? Yep, Saturday the 12th, when you get here. We all, we're all gonna be wearing these t-shirts uh, for the event and for the entire day. It's going to be fun. Um, so today's the last day for that. Very, very important. Um, that is not cool. Anyway, uh, also the next day after this is Celebration Sunday. Anyone know what Celebration Sunday is? Who's at church on Sunday? You guys saw the giant trophy? No? How could you miss it? You just walk in and you see this giant thing with bunch of random gold gold spoons and a bowl on top that is the trophy there's going to be a cinnamon roll competition chili competition soup competition and meat competition so if you can cook any of those you should sign up if not you should just come and eat that's what i'm going to do because so celebration sunday you want to be able to be there that is at the weborg center so don't go to church that day we're going to be there and we're going to have lots of food and I don't know if this is an important text. Nope, it's just my brother. <laughs> I mean, yes, he's important. Yeah, sorry. Anyway, my brother just got his pilot license yesterday, so that's pretty cool. Maybe he'll be able to fly and meet us sometime. All right, so that is our two announcements. Um, we're going to be doing some crazy things today. So I'm going to need you all to everyone. We're going to go to the back room. Back, not back room, back area. And we're going to make one giant circle. Oh one giant circle. So if you guys know what a circle is, we're making a giant circle. Make sure your hands are free. You don't want anything in your hands. Stand to next, next to someone you don't like. I'm just kidding. Stand, to, stand next to someone you do like. I, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, one giant circle, real quick. We're going to have, so whoever wins this game, you're listening? Whoever wins this game gets a free t-shirt for Dare to Share Live, okay? Do you, you guys have to just, just see. Um, no, you should not move the TV. Just don't hit the TV, please. Um, no tackling people. All right, you guys ready? Everyone, are you guys playing? Come on over, come on. You have, you, dude, you get the opportunity to win a free t-shirt. That's pretty cool. It's $10 worth. All right. How many of you guys have ever played the game Ninja? No. You've never played the game Ninja? All right. Who, okay, you guys have played, right? So these are the rules. Listen. You're not listening. All right. So this is the rules for the game. Remember, if, if you don't listen and you don't hear the rules and you're out, you can't. Can't say I didn't tell you. So, you're standing, and the person next to you, we're only going to be playing with hands, okay? So, you have to say, when I say three, two, one, ninja, you have to strike a pose, okay? One person is going to be going around, so this person is going to start, okay? So, strike a pose, a ninja pose. Okay, so you 
So everyone's going to be striking the pose. You are going to try to hit Alexia's hand with one movement. So you can do like this. And if you hit her hand, then she's out. If you move and she moves away, that means she it's her turn. So she can either hit your hand or Bailey's hand, right? So does everyone understand? Yes, you have a question. Nope, only hands. Okay. Only hands. Up from, from the wrist, go down. Yes. Yes. You cannot put your hands behind your back. Oh. Okay, no hitting his hand hard. You, listen, you cannot put your hands behind your back. Okay, you can put it like this, but you can't have it like behind your back against something. Okay? You're not out until both hands are out. Correct. Yes. You can go on either side of you. I'm going to let someone else start. All right. Is everyone ready? Is everyone ready? You have a question? A what? Yes. You can use a turn to reset. Um... But it is one movement. So if, if I'm like this, and I move like this, so I'm allowed to take one step. OK, you guys are not listening. Is everyone listening? All right, you're allowed to take one step like this. OK, you're not allowed to move like this. It is one step. You're allowed to move backwards, forwards, like that, yes. Yes, whatever pose you make, that is your pose until it's your turn next. That does count. Okay, so we're going to start and we're going to learn as we go along. All right, so you're going to start and we're going this way. I'm going to say three, two, one, ninja, and you're going to strike a pose. One step to dodge, and then when it's your turn, you get one step to attack. So if someone is attacking you, you are allowed to move. Okay? You can't, like, run away, but you're allowed to make one movement away. Yes, Aaron's starting off, starting us off. Yep, then you, then you, then you, then you, then you. We're going on. You can do that. You can attack the person once they're next to you. Okay, everyone ready? Stand still. Everyone come really close together, real close together. When I say three, two, one, ninja, you're gonna take a jump back and strike a pose. So come on. All right. Three, three, two, one, ninja. All right, so you gotta freeze. You gotta freeze wherever you are. All right, he's going to go first. He's going to make one movement. If he goes for you, you're allowed to dodge. If he goes for you, you're allowed to dodge. And go. Yeah. What? Yep, that's your position. You can't move. Yep, both arms out to be out. Go. Yeah. No, you can't move. <laughs> Did he get you? Did he get your hand? Yeah, that's uh, that arm's dead. Oh, that arm's dead. Oh, you gotta hit their hand. Yep. Yeah, you already used your turn. So, your hand. Your hand is here, because that's where you hit. So you're allowed to move. You can hit his hand if you want. It's out. His, his other hand is out. Oh. Now, once your hand is out, it's behind your back. All right, keep going.
It's one movement. You got to just keep, keep it there. You can't do like this and then go back around. There we go. Yeah, it's your turn. Go, go, go. You got to freeze with your hand wherever you hit them. Oh, that one's out. So it's your turn. Your turn. You can hit his hand too if you want. Oh, well now he's out. Yeah, you can take one step. All right, so that one's out. Yeah, you're allowed to dodge. You already used your move, so your hand was like kind of like here. Yeah. So you gotta put your hand back here. Oh. There we go. Now it's her turn. All right, so that hands out. Go fast. Yeah, any side. All right, I'm gonna start counting five seconds. You have to make your move in less than five seconds. One, two. One, two, three. It's your turn. So this hand was out. I didn't know we started yet. Well, that's, you gotta pay attention. You gotta pay attention. All right, your turn. Now it's Bailey's turn. Yeah, your turn. You're allowed to dodge. Oh! All right, keep going. Gotta pay attention. So it's your turn. Now it's your turn. Wait, no, it's her turn. All right, so now you're out. So now it is your turn. Oh! Quick, quick stuff. Oh, you gotta stay right there. All right, you gotta keep going. Keep it moving, keep it moving. You can do this arms in, the one in front. Yes. Yes, you can take a knee. You gotta freeze. All right, whose turn is it? All right, you gotta go. Wrist, from your wrist, go up to your fingers is what counts, yep. Your turn, make a move. Wait, your hand, your hand was out here, remember? All right, your turn, yep. No, it's, it's your turn first. Oh, your hand is out here, remember? Because you remember you hit her, you gotta keep it. Yeah, it stops. All right, is it your turn? No, your turn. Oh, you gotta keep your hand out here. No, no, you're still in, yeah. It's your turn, Kirsten. You can do that hand if you want. 
Yes, you can take one step. Oh, you got to keep your hand there. All right, go, Bailey. Got to keep it moving. Keep it moving. You can even take it, take a jump back if you want. Oh. Oh, boy. All right, Emily. Take a jump forward. Yep, that could, that could be your move. All right, your turn. It's your turn. She jumped, so that was her turn. She just, oh, she was trying to distract her. Oh, quick. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to move from there. Yeah, stand up if you want. Yes. And go. <laughs> All right, go. Yeah, your turn. Oh, he's smart. He's backing away. All right, go. You can take a step backwards if you want. You got to keep your hand there. Yeah, your turn. Dude, he could have just hit his hand right there. It's your turn, yeah. Dodge once, attack once. Yep. So if I go here, she could have she could dodge it. No, you could put it back. Did you go? Did you go yet? Oh, all right, go. All right, you're not a, you're not allowed to lie on the floor. How about you get up? All right, you got to keep it going. Five, four. Oh, your turn. Oh, good. So now it's your turn. Oh boy. Oh, she was quick. She was quick. All right, Bailey, keep going, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Oh, nice, she's smart. What? Oh, you, you can uh, you can attack her hand. You gotta stay in that position if that's the one you made. Whose turn is it? Yours? Go. All right, yeah. Oh, quick, oh, quick. Oh, he's smart, he's smart, backing away. Try to get on your feet. <laughs> okay, how about we, we make a rule that you have to stay on your feet? Cause then he can't hit you on the floor, so stand up. Um, no, stand, stand up. You gotta stay on your feet. Gotta stay, stay on your feet, up. All right, there we go. Yeah, you can start there. Three, two, one, go. All right, you gotta go. Yep, your turn. Just make a giant leap forward if you want. Oh, he's backing away. All right, your turn. Yep, with your one, your one hand. We are playing for a free T-shirt here. There are no friends. There we go. He's moving up. There's no rule. You could like jump all the way over here if you want. The one behind his back doesn't count. All right, you going? Five, four, three. Oh, 
Yep. Okay. Hey, you gotta keep your, your hands wherever it's supposed to be. Okay, good. Smart. Alright. Keep going. Oh, there we go. Now it's your turn. All right, five, four, three. Five, four, three, okay. You guys gotta attack people, keep going. You guys are all just defending now, this is gonna take forever. Yes. You have, you have to attack. Yes, that's a good rule. You can only, you could only like jump backwards one turn and then the next turn you have to attack. Bailey, is it your turn? Okay, she's gone. She's gonna attack. There are no friends here, Bailey. No friends. She will not hate you, I promise. This is a free t-shirt. Oh boy. All right, watch out, she could hit you. Five, four, three, two. Oh boy, oh, oh. Oh, she got it. All right, your turn. Oh no, you, you just went. Oh, oh. Well, well, you're allowed to move one step and move. So that was, I, I think that was a good move. I think it was like a, whoopsh. what do you guys think? Is he safe? I think, I think, I think it counts. I think it does count. I'm sorry, sir. It does count. You gotta, you gotta keep your, keep your toes. All right. So whose turn is it? Zuka, did you move? Okay. Why are people swinging their hands? It's ninja. You gotta be. All right. Keep going. All right. Is it your turn? Five, four, three. Ready? Five, four, three. Five. Oh, did he get you? He did. Well done, Gabe. Oh. And it's coming down to the end. All right, let's see. A free t-shirt. You were playing for a free t-shirt. All right, Bailey. Oh, very tempting. Very tempting. You gotta do like the no look move. Five, four, five. Oh, okay, one hand is out. Five, four, three. Oh, that was so graceful. Are, are you out? Yes, okay. All right, he's moving. All right, keep going. Yeah. Keep that hand behind your back if it's out. All right. All right, Gabe. Yeah. The faster you go is the faster you can get people off guard. Guard. All right, she's going, she's going. 
Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Yeah, you gotta stay there. Oh, you're having someone sneak up behind you. All right, Mike. You could just take like one step forward, like a big step. There we go. All right, it's your turn. You gotta, you gotta go forward, cause you jumped backwards last time. Your turn. All right, you can stand on two feet. All right, Gabe, it's your turn. was already out you went for I know but this hand was out so you all right oh you missed it all right you guys gotta pay attention gotta pay attention because the order stays the same All right, Bailey, you gotta go forward this time. Oh, wait, was it? It wasn't your turn. It wasn't your turn, you're still in. You're still in. Oh, oh! Is it, isn't it your turn? It's his and then yours. All right, jump forward, man. There's lots of hands out there. Oh, he went quick. He went quick. I think you gotta keep your hand out here, man. You gotta keep your hand out here. Ooh. All right, Bailey. It is Bailey. All right, she. That was that your move? All right. Wh which hand is out? Okay, that one. Gotcha. Oh boy! Oh! He was quick. He was paying attention. All right. Is is it your turn? Oh. Oh, you gotta keep your hand there. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're out. Are you out? Yeah, I think you're out. No, I have one hand there. Oh, oh that was your. Oh, okay, gotcha. You got. You gotta get it from wrist to fingers. All right. You gotta put back your, your hand where it was. There we go. Okay. Um, Bailey, I believe. Just jump th this way. Jump this way. 
There we go. Okay, you have to attack. Because I think last time you just took a step, right? So you got to attack someone. You got to go back and then make a jump attack. Jump attack for someone. Oh, there we go. Oh, you're far away. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh man. You gotta jump in, you gotta attack this move. Dead. He's, he has to attack. He's going. You gotta do it fast so they don't see you coming. There we go. Oh! Man, this, this is a ninja right here. That was quick. Alright, you gotta go. I I couldn't see. I couldn't see. I'm gonna trust. I could hear it. I could. I I'm gonna trust his honesty here. If you, I yes, you have to get up. You can't be on the floor. <laughs> All right. You gotta be facing the other way. Oh boy. All right. Gotta keep going here. All right, Renata, can we get some fun music to go with this? All right, guys, we gotta speed this game up. Oh, she was quick. She was quick. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, you're still in, cause it was her. It was his turn. Yes, it does. It does. All right, you're still in. You get a second chance. Go back in your position. Yes, go. Wherever, wherever your hand was, you remember? Oh, now you're out, gotcha. Oh, you got him. Oh, you got to keep your hand where it was. Well, you got to be like, keep it like off the ground like that. All right. Oh, he was quick. All right. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. Yeah. So it's just you, Luca. It's just five of you left. Yes. Oh, you did? Thanks for selling it. She got out. Yes, you have to stand up. So now it's your turn, yeah? I got it. I felt Oh, nice. Okay, no, you have to attack. You have to attack that one. You have to attack that time. All right. 
put your hand behind your back. That's not. That's not in. Which hand's behind your back? Which hand is behind your back? <laughs> oh! <laughs> all right, all right. Stand up, everyone. Stand up. Come back in the middle here. Come back in the middle so we can see it on the camera. We can double check. All right. I'm gonna say three, two, one, ninja. You guys are gonna jump back and then you're gonna have to. You have to attack every move, right? Three, two, one, ninja. Doesn't matter. All right, go. Which hand's in? It has to be in front of you, remember? Has to be in front of you. Three. <laughs> All right, how about no falling on the floor? No going on the floor. All right. And oh, that was a, that was an, an insane move. Well done. You won. You are the official ninja of Rhyme tonight, and you've won yourself a free T-shirt. All right, that was pretty insane, you guys. That was uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Not gonna lie. All right, so we're gonna do one more game for tonight. I'm gonna need you to find someone, same gender, about your height. It, it is not. Nope, nope. Find someone and then stand up and then go in your pair back, back there. Uh, maybe, if we have time tonight, we can do that. Find someone who is your gender that you'd wanna play this game with. All right, let's go back here. You don't, you don't have one? Yes, that counts. Go, go, go. You're too short. You want to go with him? All right, you can do it. All right, let's go. Real quick, real quick. All right, so the name of this game, ready, is, and you don't have to play this game if you don't want to. What? No, it is not. It is not. All right, so everyone in their pairs. All right, the name of this game is, Renata, Body Parts. Okay, okay, real quick. So, you are going to, when I say go, you are going to stand across the room from each other, quickly match what it says on the screen. Each round, the last team is eliminated. So, I'm gonna need you guys in little teams. Okay. Yes. Yep. Across the room from your partner. Across the room, across the room. Whoever's on one team, make sure you have eyes on your partner. Okay? When. You guys are gonna have to run across the room and match your body parts with whatever that this thing says. Okay, so we're gonna have a trial run. Um, yes, touch the wall. Touch the wall, touch the wall, everyone touch the wall. All right, you're gonna help me here. We're gonna see who does it last and then they're out. All right, yes. No, you just have to touch and stay. Touch and stay the last person who is who is who makes the connection is out. We will be watching. You're watching as well. Yes, your partner, okay? You guys are watching the screen. Three, two, one, go. Knee to knee. Oh, I think. You guys are out. Oh man. Okay. 
I said three, two, one, go. All right, you guys are back in. We're gonna. Let's go. That was a trial run. Everyone knows how this is happening now. Okay. Okay. Ready? Three, two, one, go. I think it was you guys. I'm sorry. All right, back back on the walls. Okay, it's just gonna go on the on the TV. Whenever Renato says says the and once you see it on the TV, then you can leave. Who was it? I think it was you guys. All right, well done, well done. All right, we're going. We're gonna go with our next one. I think it was you guys. Well done. No, I think you guys are in. I think you guys are still in. All right. No, there are no lip slips. And whenever it goes on the screen. What do you think? Was it? I think it was you guys. I think it was. Ah, uh, that is okay. All right. All right. And three, two, one. Well, sorry, 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 sorry. Go, go, go. <laughs> right here, I think, was the was the answer. <laughs> All right, guys. We're we're gonna keep going. All right, you guys keep watching. Keep watching. I'm going to have that decision up to you guys. I was not watching. I'm going to ask my judges. Judges, what do you think? Okay, okay, I think you guys are, are, are out. So close. All right. It's whenever Renata decides. Barefoot. Oh, I don't think you guys are barefoot. Oh, they are touching socks, you're right. All right, who was, uh, who was it? Do you remember? Everyone has socks on. No one got it. So, do you guys know what the word barefoot means? It means not socks. Oh, no, we're, not, we're gonna cancel that round. We're canceling that round. Everyone go back, go back. All right, whoever is not playing needs to be seated. All right. And... Oh, I think you guys are out there. All right. Round 10 is coming up. All right. Oh, man. I think it was you guys. Yes, I think so. It was close. It was close. All right, now we're taking things to the next level. We have two more people. All right. All right, you guys got to be fast. Oh, we have, we have a winner. I, I think we have some winners here. Let's hear it for our winners. Well done. You guys both get free t-shirts. The finger thing? Yes.
Okay, all right. We're gonna have 10 people who want to play the next game. 10 people. All right, come on, come on down here. 10 people. Yes. Okay. Um, nope. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You gotta have a partner. All right, Luca is gonna explain this game. I didn't plan this game. I don't know. Luca wants to play. All right, ready? Everyone hold a partner's hand. Do you not have a partner? Luca, that is so wrong. Go with, uh, no, no, go with, uh, Mike. No, you're just, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to win. Well, he needs a partner his own size. You gotta get someone your own size. Go get someone your own size. Aaron, you wanna play? All right, go play with Aaron. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, the winners, the winners stay, the losers have to go sit. That's okay, I don't either. This is Luca's, Luca's game that he just wants to be able to wrestle. All right. In the meantime, worship team, let's uh, let's let's get all ready for our our time. All right, everyone else, let's uh, let's all come come down here. We're gonna have our time of worship. And then we're gonna. All right. All right, someone can get the, the lights in the back there if you know where it is. Yep. Hello, hello. Is it muted, you think? Oh, okay. Oh, something, I think something with the keyboard is weird. When do we get our t-shirts? Next week. On Wednesday? Maybe. If not, on Saturday. Saturday. For the Dare to Share Live.
I think uh, I think we'll we'll take a little break here, and um, we'll come back up in a little bit and finish our, our worship set, and maybe we can get the piano working. So you guys can take a seat. In the meantime. And maybe we can get someone to get the lights. All right, who remembers what we're talking about today? I mentioned it. Yeah, someone said cure, right? All right, so last week, what did we talk about? You guys remembered? Some. Nope, not share. Prayer. Yeah, we talked about prayer, right? And we talked a little bit about um, praying for the people. Why is it important to pray for people? Anyone remember? No, yes. Why is it important to pray? I guess for it's, it's not important to pray then. It's because we're talking to God, right? We're talking to God about people because God created people. Um, so, how many of you have ever built a tower out of, like, anything? Hopefully not people, right? Have you guys ever seen, like, those pyramids, like, people make, like, with people, like, four at the bottom and then three and then two and one? No? Yes? So, how many of you guys have ever built a tower that was pretty sturdy, Say, like, like, with toys or something. What did you make your tower out of? Uh, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that was pretty sturdy. Anyone else? Yeah. Legos. Oh, Legos. Legos can build pretty decent towers. I've actually seen, like, towers, like the, the Eiffel Tower, like, made out of Legos. Have you guys ever seen those giant yeah. things, like, in the mall or something? Made out of Legos. That's pretty cool, right? Anyone else? What'd you build your tower out of? Boxes. Was that pretty sturdy? Well, you can like jump in and go. Eee! Yeah. All right. What'd you build your tower out of? Dominoes. Dominoes. Was that pretty sturdy? I see. Have any of you guys ever played the game Jenga? Nah, that's, that's pretty insane. I've actually had like a life-size Jenga one where we had to like use ladders to like keep stacking it up. It was insane. You did not want that falling on you. Um, it, was, it was pretty heavy. It was made out of like plastics, thankfully. All right, so what were some of the challenges that you guys um, faced building these towers? You guys faced any challenges? Yeah. Yeah, it falling over on you, right? That's a big challenge. Anything else? Someone shaking the table. Someone shaking the table. So an outside source kind of bothering the tower. Anything else? Yeah. Mom. Mom, Mom will, will be a challenge if you're building the tower in the living room with all of, and she has guests coming over. And her, her trying, to vacuum the floor. trying to vacuum the floor. Yeah. Wow, I, I see eyes. <laughs> She's holding a baby. Anyway, um, so the, the thing is, uh, with, with towers, usually um, a good foundation is uh, needed for a tower, right? If you guys ever build, like, in construction, you guys know that when you're building a house, you need a good foundation, right? You know that. You need a good foundation for it to at least stand, because if you build it on shaky ground, it's probably going to fall over. If you build it with materials that don't really last or are not great, like I don't know how great boxes or dominoes are, but I'm pretty sure Legos are good because they, they can stack on each other and kind of connect, right? So a f strong foundation is, is needed for this um, to build a proper tower. Now, we're talking a little bit about one particular story uh, in the Bible. Anyone remember what the story was that we told two weeks ago and last week we talked about a little bit? Yeah? You remember? No, no, we actually didn't talk about that one, but that's a good story. 
No, not not the prodigal son either. Someone else, yeah. Yes, yes, they brought the paralyzed man down where? Through someone's roof. roof. That is insane. That is still insane to me. I can't believe that someone would be digging someone's roof and like putting a man through. That's quite insane. So today we'll be talking a little bit about that, and we're talking about care, right? So um, if you guys would like to turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5, that's where the story is. We'll be talking a little bit about the story and how was care shown in this story, right? Um, Luke chapter 5 and verse 17 to 20. We're going to read that again. So maybe it'll pop up. Yeah. So one day while Jesus was teaching, some Pharisees and teachers of the religious law were sitting nearby. It seemed that these men show, showed up from every village in all Galilee and Judea, as well as from Jerusalem, and the Lord's healing power was strongly with Jesus. Some men came carrying a paralyzed man on a sleeping mat. They tried to take him inside to Jesus, but they couldn't reach him because of the crowd. So they went up to the roof and they took off some tiles, and then they lowered the sick man on his mat down to the, into the crowd right in front of Jesus. That was some good aim right there. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the man, young man, your sins are forgiven. So, so in this, in this passage, um, what, how can we see that these, like, what are some examples of care in the story? I won't tell you. How can we see care shown towards someone here? So recap, the men took, Je- took the paralyzed man to Jesus. They couldn't get him in, so what'd they do? They took him on the roof. What are some examples of care? It's pretty obvious you guys can say it. Yeah. Taking him, right? So because he couldn't go by himself, so they showed him care by taking him. So this is a real story here. So you could imagine this like happening in Scott's Bluff. Like, this is a headline on the news. This is a real man. They took him on a mat because he couldn't walk. They took him, and they ripped off tiles. So it wasn't just like a poor house. Like, the man had tiles on his roof. They broke it, and they lowered him down right in front of Jesus. This is some serious example um, of, of determination to care for this person, right? So, some examples of how... Jesus cared for people just in the Bible in general. What are some things that Jesus did caring for people? Yeah. He healed people, right? So that's an example in this story as well. So we didn't get to that yet, but yes, he healed people. What is another example of care that Jesus showed? He taught people stuff. He taught people stuff, yep. You guys could just shout it out. Examples that Jesus, Jesus cared for people. Gave them, the gave them the gospel. Also, before that, he gave them food. food, right? You guys remember that story when he fed them? Fed over how many people? I think it was like, like a like couple thousand, right? Lots, lots of people he fed them. What else did he do? Showing care. He ate with people that were rejected by others. Tax collectors, sinners, prostitutes, all those people, he ate and sat with them. Yep. He washed people's feet. I I don't think he washed perfume. Someone washed his feet with perfume. Yeah, that's okay. But he did wash his disciples' feet, right? That's showing care to them. Yeah. Anyone else? What is the biggest example of care? He died on the cross for us, right? That was a huge example. That was a physical action of care that, like, we were supposed to be dying. We were supposed to be the one suffering and dying for um, for what we've done with him against God, right? Um, so these are just some examples of how Jesus cared. Um, but we, sh- we see in this story that the people, the man's friends, cared for him so much that they took initiative, Um And we want to look at that and see how can we do that in our own lives. So, stories about Jesus are all over the gospel where Jesus cared about others. He didn't just talk to them. So even the people that he healed, 
He didn't just say, oh, I'm just going to um, talk to you and forgive your sins, but I'm just going to leave you blind. I'm going to leave you paralyzed. I'm going to leave you, and you just pray. Just pray, and, and you know, God will heal you sometime. I have the power to do it, but I'm going to forgive your f- sins instead. Did you just do that? No, he healed people, right? He healed people with leprosy and, and blindness and someone who couldn't walk for the entire of their lives. So he didn't just talk to people. He did an action and he did something. And that's what we want to do with our lives. We want to be able to care for people. So it's good to go up to people and share the gospel with them, yes. But the people who want to talk to you, they want to talk to you because you, you care about them. Have you ever started a conversation with someone and asked them how they were going? And how their life is doing, and how their brother or sister is doing, how they're doing in school, instead of just going up to them and saying, hey, can you do this for me? Can you actually um, maybe go here? Can you believe this? Can you just believe this? And, and then I'll be on my way. Like, that's not really as effective as if, as if you take interest in someone's life. So, an example of this, and Luca uh, got to see this with me is we got to go share day on go share day we got to go talk to people at the park right so that happened on the 29th uh, this past Saturday and we got to go talk to people at the park and there was this one guy walking his dogs and we were just wondering how can we talk to this person how can we share Jesus with this person so we could have and Luca and I could have well done it because we know it we know the gospel. We could have gone up to him and just said, hey, can I tell you about Jesus? And the guy would have been like, okay, maybe, sure, like whatever, maybe. Or we could have, and this is what we did, we took interest in the man's life. And we're not doing it just because we want to get to the gospel. We're doing it because we genuinely care about this person. So people are not just objects or they're not just people that we can attack with the gospel people are people just like you and me right they have feelings they have things that are going on with their life they have interests and likes so we talked to the man about his dog that he was walking we talked to the man about his life talked to the man about where he goes to church we talked to the man about what he believed and he got to express a little bit of his opinion And then slowly but surely, we got to share the gospel with him. And that was really, really cool because we were able, so at one point, he was actually going to be just saying, hey, I got to actually go away now, Um, but it was nice talking to you. But since we um, took an interest in his life, he let us walk along with him for the rest of his walk. And we were walking and talking with him. And I think that's what Jesus did in scripture as well. Jesus was very relational with people, and that's a way to care for people. So caring for people can be a bunch of different things, right? We can do lots of different things to care for people. Um, We can care for people by giving them things. We can care for people by asking them how their day is going. We can care for people by giving them a listening ear. How many of you guys just want someone to listen to you sometimes? You have a lot going on, and you're just like, hey, can you listen to me for like two minutes? And it's ended up being like 30 minutes or whatever. Um, but you just need someone to listen to you. How many of you guys like people to do acts of kindness to you? Maybe uh, your mom or dad does your laundry and you didn't tell them thank you, but you go up to them and you tell them thank you. Like That's an act of kindness and you're showing them how much you care and appreciate them. How about someone who's maybe getting bullied at school? and you stand up for them. And you're like, hey, stop doing that. That's not nice. That is showing someone that you care about them and actually standing up for what's right, right? Or what if you see someone sitting alone at lunch at school? Do you think it'd be nice of you to go sit with them, have a conversation with them? People are people, right? Remember, every one of us are, have a decision to make whether we can be um, caring for people or not caring for people. Um, So I want to read 1 Corinthians 13, and it's 
2 to 7, and it says this. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I have nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a mar martyr, but I don't love, I've got nowhere. So, matter, so no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keep, keeps on going to the end. So we're going to start back from um, the verse that it says, never gives up. So we're going to be looking at love here. So love is the main word um, that we're talking about. So out of this, um, the Bible describes lots of different things, right? So there are names for this in Scripture. When it says, it never gives up, what is another word for never giving up? You guys can think about it. What's, what's a word for never giving up? Yeah? Persistence, yep. If you're never giving up about something, you're persistent. Another word is patient, right? It means that you're patient with someone. You're not giving up on them as soon as they offend you, as soon as they say something. You're, you're being patient. What about the next thing? Love cares more for others than for self. What do you call that? Yes, being selfless, right? Or kind. All right, we're going on to the next one. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. If you don't want what you don't have, what is that? Jealousy. Yeah, love isn't jealous, so, so what's the opposite of jealousy? Being content, yeah? So love is being content. All right, what about love doesn't strut? So when you're strutting, that means like you're proud of yourself, right? What's the opposite of pride? Humble. Yeah, you're being humble. So love is, is you being humble as well, right? All right, we're going on. Love doesn't have a swelled head. What does that mean? Almost the same thing, right? You don't have a swelled head. You don't think of yourself better than others. A word I have here is love is modest, being modest in yourself and what you do, how you approach your, your daily activities and daily being. All right, love doesn't force itself on others. So if you're forcing your way or you're forcing your attitude, forcing what you have to say above others, that's almost like disrespectful, right? having a conversation with someone and you're talking over them or you're letting your opinion matter more. So love is polite, right? Love is being polite or respectful. All right, what does it say next? Love isn't always me first. What does that what does that mean? If it's not always you, it's someone else. So like selfless, that's we had that one. Caring, yep. What about the word love is being considerate of others? And someone said caring. 
All right, what else can, can being loving mean? Love doesn't fly off the handle. What does that mean? Yeah, love doesn't, doesn't mean getting angry easily, right? So it means e- even-tempered. How many of us have like a, a high temper sometimes? All right, we're going to keep going. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. What does that mean? Yeah, that is definitely something that love is. Even uh, we can know that because of what Jesus has done for us too, right? All right. Love doesn't revel when others grovel. You guys even know what that means? So love, um, it, it means like when others are just carrying on and being um, just, they're making the, the issue that they have like a big deal and they're, they're talking about it and gossiping and talking more about it. Um, love is not joining in on that, but instead it's having grace for for those people so does anyone know what the word grace means yeah 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 Mm -hmm. i i always remember it as grace is something that someone gives to you that you don't deserve does anyone know what mercy means slightly different all right you want to say it not getting what you do deserve. So we deserve death, but because of Christ's mercy that we don't have to die anymore. But instead, we receive eternal life. Did we, did we deserve eternal life? No. no, so it's what God has given to us, right? So grace is actually receiving something that you don't deserve. So if you have someone and they don't really deserve your love, and you give it to them anyway, that's being gracious. So that's what that means. All right, love takes pleasure in following the truth. This one has the answer in it. Love is being truthful, truthful, right? So it means that we're being honest. All right, we're almost done here. Love puts up with anything. You guys see that? Love puts up on anything. A word, a word that comes to mind, what does it mean to be putting up with anything? It starts with an E. E N D. U. Yeah, love, love endures, right? Endures till the end. So how many of you guys ever like you have something um, against your, your brother or sister or something, but you're like, oh, I really don't like them right now. But because they're my brother and sister, I'm going to choose to love them even though they're annoying right now. So love endures, right? You endure through the trials, um, through your husband or wife. I see husband and wife staring at each other. You're loving them for the rest of your life because love endures till the end. All right, uh, let's see. Love, uh, trust God always. That's the next one. Love, trust God always. So love, if you trust someone always, what does that mean? Having trust in someone always. Faithful, yeah. Your love is being Faithful. Love is being faithful to someone, right? You, when you're faithful to someone, it means that you're showing them that you trust them. You trust them. How? What does the verse say? Always. All right, love always looks for the best. What does that mean? If you're always looking for the best in a situation. Optimistic. Optimistic. What's another word for that? A simple word. I think simply. It starts with a P. 
opposite of negative? Positive. positive. Yeah, love is being positive or optimistic, right? So have you ever had a situation where it's like, ah, this is a terrible situation. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, or we can choose to be positive and look for the good in things, right? Love always looks for the best. All right, love never looks back. What does that mean? Yeah, you're forgetting, you're forgetting what's in the back so you have something for the future. If you're looking forward to something, we have, what was that? Yes, yeah, love is being hopeful, right? We want to be hopeful as believers. Love keeps going till the end. What does that mean? I think we already have it here. It means to endure, right? So how, you guys see how many things that we got from this verse that, that the Bible is saying, but we actually have a word for it? So this all encompasses love. And how we care for people is how we love them. And that's, that's what these verses are trying to say. These things are a lot of what the man did for his friend. The men were positive in the situation. They, were, they showed grace. They gave the man um, to Jesus, even though he didn't really deserve it. The man was selfless. The man were patient, even, ten, even tempered, content. They were kind. They endured till the end. They didn't just say, well, the place is full. We'll come back another time. Um, the, ma- the men were very humble and faithful to their friend. Um, so all these things are examples of love and care that we can show to people. So the act of showing someone's love, there's different types of love in the Bible. Anyone knows like, what the word love means in English, normal English? What does the word love mean? You guys know? If you say, I love my parents or I love my husband or wife, or I love my church, or I love this McDonald's cheeseburger. What, is it, what does it mean to love someone or love something? It's a choice, right? You're choosing to love this person. It doesn't necessarily mean that you feel like that always, but you choose to love them. But like, what's a meaning? What's like a definition? It's a, it's a deep passion, a deep, starts with C. Deep care, yeah. So that's the definition of love. It's a deep care for someone. So in the Bible, there are different types of love. Um, there is a love called, have any of you guys heard of an agape love? Does anyone want to try to guess what an agape love means? So this is a type of love in the Bible. Yeah. Selfless. Exactly. Yep. So this, this type of love is mostly a love for God, right? Um, and we want to describe our love for God as something that is selfless, as something that is super caring. It's a deep, deep care um, that we have for God, right? Um, so that is one example of love. Um, that is most suitable for what we're talking about here. So, um, the act of showing someone agape love can, can be um, very different. We can do that in different ways. Um, it can happen across a few minutes. It can happen across a few weeks. It can happen across a few years or a few decades. Whatever the length of your relationship with someone, demonstrating this care um, with this can sh- be shown in different ways. Um, so a really practical um, way that we can do this is spending time with someone. Um, so really, really, when we sh- want to show our love for God, we want to spend time with him. If we want to show our love for our friends, we spend time with them. A lot of times we can say like, okay, I'm just going to do this for this person. They should be happy for... A certain amount of time, then they will be, oh, we have a crying baby. She's showing love to that baby by spending time with the fake baby. 
and the baby's crying. Anyway, um, so yeah, time is one way that we show love and we show care, right? So how many of you guys have friends who are maybe struggling with something and they're not, they're not sad all the time? I mean, they're not happy all the time. They're pretty sad. They're pretty depressed. They're pretty anxious. They're pretty, they don't have a great situation at home. Um, maybe that's, that's you tonight. Um, but what are some ways that you can, and I want you to think about this, how can you care for them? Um, this is not even thinking about sharing the gospel now, but this is a, a way practically of how we can care for the needs of people before we even, even mention the name Jesus. Because it's a lot of our example that does the relational part of sharing the gospel. And someone will quicker listen to you if you care about them than if you just walk up to them and want to shove Jesus down their throat, right? They're not going to be very receptive to that. If you can see that they're like needing something, you have that something, but you're like, you know what? I'm just going to tell you about Jesus and then run away. No, that's not how it works. That's not, I mean, it can work, but has to be a really special situation. It's more effective um, for, for us if we care about the people. So you do have these friends. Maybe they're hurting, um, but I want you to try to, this week, meet a need that one of your friends has. It could be simple as buying them lunch at school if you see that they're maybe struggling to get lunch, or it could be simple as sitting with them at break or lunch and just talking to them. could be simple as helping them study for a test that you're like, oh, this comes super easy to me, and then they're struggling with their homework. It could be in your family. Your family is really struggling with something. Maybe your brother and sister is trying to get something done, but they just can't. But you take the time to sit with them, and you teach them, and you care for them, right? What are some ways that you can practically care for people. So, um, I'm not sure, do we have um, the other music or not? It doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to um, just go into our little groups and we're just going to talk about caring for people. And I want you to think about these names. So these names that we wrote last week, if you guys didn't get a chance to write down any of your friends' names that you want to maybe think and pray about. There are some more ping pong balls up here, and we want to keep writing these names on it. Um, but we're going to split off into our groups, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we can care for people. Practical examples, and as we write these names on the balls or as we talk about things, I want you to determine in your heart, hey, I'm going to do this this week. I'm going to send this person a text and be like, hey, I'm praying for you. Something simple like that can show someone how much you care for them in their situation. Um, so let's, let's uh, split off into our groups and uh, talk a little bit about how we can care for people. Then we'll come back and finish off with just some, um, you guys can share some of your ideas with, with us. Um, so let's come back here at 8. 15. So we have about 15 minutes just to talk about ways that we can care for people. Um, and then come back, we'll share a little bit, and then we'll finish off with, uh, with something else. I'll let you know. So guys, we're going downstairs. Girls, you can split up into...